guys, welcome to another episode of Joe Knows. The last video I made like this, I focused on training with chronic low back pain. And that received a ton of positive feedback. It helped a lot of you guys out, which I am very thankful for. Uh, appreciate the feedback. But it led to a lot of follow-up questions regarding knee pain. And a lot of you asked me if I could make a similar video addressing knee pain and training around chronic knee pain. So that is what I'm going to do today. I am going to give you four of my favorite, most practical warm-up exercises for reducing knee pain and helping you train around that nagging, annoying tendonitis and pain that a lot of us deal with, especially athletes. So let me share them with you now. Number one, first and foremost, we're gonna talk about mobility. If you're dealing with knee pain, you wanna make sure you are addressing ankle mobility. If your ankles are tight and locked up, when you go to do something like a squat or you go run a sprint, if your ankles are locked up, your body's gonna to try to steal that mobility from somewhere else. And usually it goes to the next joint in line which in this case is the knee. And you don't need to be a, a biomechanics expert to realize that once your body starts trying to steal mobility from your knee, that's gonna cause issues. There's a lot of different stretches and mobility drills you could do for your ankles. One of my favorites, just very easy, very practical, is a weighted calf stretch where you basically grab a weight plate, a dumbbell, a kettlebell, and stand at the edge of a stair and basically just let your heel hang down. Let that weight pull you down, let the heel drop down, keep your legs straight. I hold that for a minute or two, and then I'll finish that stretch off by bending my knee and trying to drive my heel to the ground while my knee is bent. You'll feel that stretch a little bit lower, more into the soleus and more the Achilles you'll feel as opposed to up higher in, in the gastroc. So that's one of my favorite calf stretches, one of my favorites for ankle mobility. Perform, like I said, about a minute or two each side and make that a staple in your routine. Speaking of mobility, the second mobility exercise I wanted to mention because I feel like in general, this muscle group is one of the most neglected groups in the body and that is the adductor group. Many people neglect their adductors and that's why they are such a big contributing factor to low back pain and knee pain. When your adductors, when your groin muscles get tight, they actually pull the knee joint inward. And when they pull the knee joint inward, they actually pull on the patella tendon and that prevents the patella tendon from tracking properly over that second toe. So you want to make sure you keep the adductors mobile. And there's a lot of great stretches out there. One of my favorites, what I'm going to show B-roll of in this video, is basically foam rolling your adductors using a barbell. Between the weight of the barbell and the narrower diameter, it just seems to pinpoint those muscles a little bit better. It is not comfortable. This is one of those those exercises that hurts like hell when you're doing it, especially down towards the bottom, right above your knee. It's very sensitive for a lot of athletes, myself included, but if you could suck it up and just get through it, let the weight of that barbell sit on that area. When you find a tender spot, let the barbell just rest there. You could even apply a little more pressure, then roll back and forth spend about two minutes on each side. And this is one of those exercises that can reduce your knee pain immediately. Those are two of my favorite mobility drills. Let's move on to activation exercises that I feel like everyone should be doing. 
For me, I believe TKEs or terminal knee extensions should be a staple in everyone's warm up, especially if you have knee pain. They are one of the best exercises for strengthening the VMO, that teardrop shaped muscle on the inside of your knee, which many people believe that knee pain and mistracking of the patella tendon is due to an imbalance between that VMO and the vastus lateralis, the quad muscle on the outside of your thigh. So performing TKs and strengthening that VMO helps to overcome that imbalance and in turn helps with tracking of the patella tendon and knee pain. I have athletes that could barely squat an empty barbell without experiencing some knee pain. Yet, if I have them perform two or three sets of TKEs and then squat, their knees are fine, no pain. So I highly recommend incorporating them into your warm up. Two to three sets of 15 to 20 reps usually does the trick. Make sure they are a staple. Also, let me make a quick note of an exercise referred to as Spanish squats. Uh, and I'm not sure how they got the name, but I, I just thought of them as I'm talking about TKEs because it is a similar concept as far as the band setup. It's just that you put the, the band around both of your knees and I'll run some B-roll footage of this while I'm talking so you can actually see the exercise, but you'll have a band around both your knees and you'll perform a squatting motion with the band set up in that fashion. And what that does is it allows you to sit your hips back more and keep more vertical shins while you squat, which is much more comfortable, much easier on your knees. Yet when you stand up and you extend at the knee, you have that band resistance. So you get an incredible quad contraction and quad activation when performing these Spanish squats as well. So make sure you're performing at least one of those, TKs or Spanish squats in every single one of your lower body warmups. All right, let me move on to my last piece of advice. And this is one I stole from the bodybuilders. Uh, I give credit where credit is due. And what I'm referring to is concluding your warm up with an isolation exercise for the hamstrings. And for me, what I've been doing with my athletes, especially those with knee pain, I have them finish their warm up with two to three sets of high rep banded leg curls before we go into our squats or whatever our main lower body lift is for that day. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, especially if you're an athlete or you're a power lifter or someone who lifts more for performance. We're used to doing compound movements first, doing the movements with the highest neurological demand first, and then we perform the isolation work, the accessory type movements later in our workout, usually at the end of our workout. And I still follow that rule 95% of the time, but if you have knee pain, try performing leg curls before your squats. Like I said, we prefer banded leg curls, but you could use a TRX, a stability ball, whatever you prefer, get a pump in your hamstrings first. And what that does is makes your knees feel way sturdier is the best word I could think of right now. Your knees just feel sturdier and more stable, especially in the bottom position of that squat or whatever your main lower body lift is going to be when you have a little bit of a pump and your hamstrings activated beforehand. You, know, you don't have to do like a true pre-exhaust like bodybuilders do where, where they're frying a muscle. We just wanna get a pump, a few high rep sets, light to moderate band tension, just to get that pump and, and to give us that feeling of more stability, more sturdiness when we squat. Uh, it makes a big difference, big reduction in pain. Give it a try. I think you guys will like it as well. So those are four of my staples in my warm up, personally and with my athletes who experience knee pain. Give them a shot. 
I'm sure they'll work for you guys as well. Uh, if you did like this video, I appreciate you giving it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because I got more videos coming at you soon. And I'll talk to you next time. Thanks, guys.